What is up, Honey Badger Nation? Welcome to another episode of Expert Mentors Live. I am uh, excited for today. We've got uh, we got the kid. We've been um, wrestling to try to get him on for quite some time, so um, made it happen. I'm glad uh, glad he's here. And you know, it's one of those those things. Sometimes it needs to wait just a little bit, and and just 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 quite there. Right. And, um, but, uh, nonetheless, Mr. Braden Kinder in the house, how you doing, sir? Doing good, man. Appreciate you having me on here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've had the the pleasure of, of knowing, uh, young, young Braden since, uh, the end of Oh four, the end of Oh four. And, um, uh, your little brother wasn't even here yet. Carson right. wasn't even here yet. So, okay. Running, uh, running, and terrorizing the office, um, harassing all the, the the pretty ladies that that worked in the office with us, and right. so uh, just kind of growing up in that uh, in that real estate DNA. But I'd love for you know all these honey badgers that haven't had an opportunity to connect with you yet, kind of kind of share a little bit of your story, a little bit of uh, you know kind of growing up in um in the real estate world and and just kind of how it's transitioned into where we're at today yeah for sure yeah um definitely you know growing up it was you know like you said kind of it's in my dna it feels like because you know from from a very young age i was always in the office either you know over at cold maker with with uh papa johnny or you know <laughs> um over with pops at the other building so you know always being around it you know growing up with it also at the same time you know I remember I remember looking back you know the times when pops had the escalator the Hummer you know and he was on listing appointments all day long and I was watching my movies you know in the back seat growing up so yeah man definitely been around it for for a long time um and it kind of just feels like second nature almost uh at this point yeah so you know for you there and and uh what what Braden was talking about is we were still Caldwell Banker but we had uh we had the building next door to to Jay's dad and um in between was a uh, rental management property uh Jay's Jay's dad has uh the largest rental property management company there in Lawton and uh, kind of set in between our our buildings and so we yeah, we took up a whole city block um, there there in Lawton, um, being able to to grow up there and 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 bounce around. And so, for for you coming out of, um, you know, easier for it would have been real easy for you to just stay stay there, stay in Lawton, get sucked in, and and you know working working in real estate side of things. And you know, for for you, what was kind of that ambition that drive I mean was there any desire yeah man um I remember you know there was a point where um you know I was quite older I was 18 at this point um and I had been working for my grandpa's maintenance company um and the way it worked kind of back then um was in, in Lawton I guess they had specific times uh you know within the year of when they held the uh the real estate courses uh, and so I was kind of in the middle of summer, um, and, and waiting on that kind of course to come around. Um, and I had a conversation with my dad because the way we were looking at it was my grandpa was like, Hey, listen, you know, I'm getting to a point where I kind of want to retire. And, um, you know, this is something I can bring you in for a couple years and, um, you know, kind of train you, put you, put you to the test, see if this is something you want to do. And ultimately probably would have been uh, taking over, you know, that Cobalt banker office, um, and I had a conversation with my dad and, um, you know, he had done a lot of investing back into the real estate business there and obviously built his business there in Lawton with the average sales price probably being near, I don't know what, a hundred thousand or so, give or take. Um, and he said, listen, man, if it was me, you know, I would move down to Texas and I would build my business there. Um, and I, I know this, I always didn't listen to everything he said, but I'm, I'm sure glad I did listen to him when he said that. Um, cause really, I think that really changed the trajectory of, of kind of my career, but really me as an individual, you know, I remember moving down here, um, and, and just being transparent, you know, the, the crowd that I was hanging with back in, back in Lawton, Oklahoma, probably wasn't always the best. Um, but, you know, shifting that to coming down here and being around people like kitchens, 
um, you know, Michael Reese on the day-to-day -day basis, my dad, um, Wally. There was quite a few people that I could say really, you know, changed my perspective, changed my mindset, and really kind of just instilled to me, even maybe not even knowing that they were doing it intentionally, but just being able to be in that environment when I got down here and networking with those type of individuals was was super beneficial for me. 100%. And, you know, I mean, there's nothing, you know, we wouldn't be here without Lawton, Oklahoma. And, you know, the discipline that it taught us and, and really how to how to build and run and, and grow a business. And right. when when you're, you know, when your dad was starting, you know, early 2000s, you know, it was the average sales price was right around 100,000. And I think even in that time frame leading up, you know, when we had that that big run for before we went independent, we still were a part of Caldwell Banker. I mean, we were in the 120s. Right. And so when you're when you're moving, you know, in volume that we were moving in with that price point, you know, details matter. Um, the, every, every I's dotted, T's crossed, you know, what are all the ways to expand the value of this transaction? And I think the, the really the beneficial thing, and I know, um, you know, Michael had a tremendous impact on you, but, but really from a mindset perspective, but, and I tell this to, to, to real estate agents all the time, Braden, is that you have to think like a marketer. You have to become a marketer that just happens to sell real estate. Right. And if you want to build this business, you've got to build a marketing, like, like build a marketing agency that just happens to sell real estate. A hundred percent. So um, much more successful. Yeah. Michael Reese shared something with me uh, and, it, and it stuck with me. And I, and I promise you, it's, it's the reason why I do the things I do today. And I don't remember exactly how he said it to me. Um, but it was something along the lines of, he said, you know, it, essentially, if you can learn to market, he said, you'll never go broke. It was pretty, pretty short like that. And that really stuck with me um, because the point he was making is, is that regardless if you're in real estate or whatever type of business you're in, you're always going to need to learn how to market. And so at the time I was in real estate, I had gotten my license and that's really kind of what kicked this whole thing off. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, I was in a position where, you know, I didn't have the money to go partner with Zillow or realtor.com or do Google pay-per-click or really anything like that. Uh, and that's, like I said, that's kind of what kicked it off because I was fortunate enough to have a lender you know, that was, that had a course that taught you how to run uh, Facebook and Instagram ads. And I remember my dad was just kind of like, you know, Hey, listen, dude, you know, and, and him having the success he had, I thought I probably my perception going in was that I was going to have it a lot easier than I did. Uh, although I didn't even close my first transaction for, I think the first five, it took me five months to close my first transaction. But he said, listen, dude, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give this to you, right? I'm not going to hand this to you. You're going to have to go learn this the hard way. You're going to have to go figure it out. And that's kind of where it started at was, you know, I started running my own Facebook advertising because I could run 150 bucks or 300 bucks a month, um, which was something I could do at that point, um, you know, as opposed to going and spending thousands with Zillow or Realtor.com. And, and like I said, that's kind of where it all started, you know, having that conversation with Mike and then being in a position to, to learn kind of how to do it all. That's where majority of my business when I first started out came from. Yeah. What was, was there anything in the beginning for you <clears throat> that either Michael gave to you or, or Pops gave to you that you really kind of consumed that helped you start to understand, you know, either, either marketing, you know, foundation fundamentals or anything with, with Kern or anything that uh, they really turned you on to that really started to shape your thinking and your mindset around, around marketing. Man, I'll be honest with you, and this is just being transparent. I'm sure there was, there's nothing that I can really put my finger on that, you know, that I could say that this is what I would go consume. If I had to really think about it, I probably could come up with something that I consumed at that point. A lot of it, I'll be honest what, though with you, is that when I took that course, the things that I was learning in that course was already proven. Um, and so it was things that I was applying, not even probably understanding the principles of it quite yet as I was applying it. Um, but I think moving forward up into this point now, uh, the biggest thing I'll tell you is that you have to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer, right? You have mm -hmm. to understand what is the perception of the consumer that I'm marketing to. 
um, and, and what are the problems and, and things that they're facing and how does my marketing speak to them and provide solutions for whatever it is that they're going through. Uh, that's what I can say I've learned up until this point. I probably, like I said, learned those fundamentals or principles uh, from the get-go uh, without probably realizing that I was. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing. You have to understand what is the perception of the, of the consumer, which is the leads that we're generating, the buyers and sellers that we're working with. Um, and, and I think really once you put yourself in those shoes, um, you really kind of start to think differently when you're doing your marketing. You know, I love that. And, and, and just for everybody listening in, guys, you know, it, there, there's a difference in, in what's going on on social. There's a difference in, in you know, creating and building your brand and what, what Braden's going to share with us and, and really what we're diving into here is how do you spend a dollar and get opportunities and, and information back? Right. Right, right. And, and really it's that on-demand type of lead generation. And we look at within, within our businesses, we want at least, you know, I know some of you guys, you know, three, 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 four strategies, I would say four, you know, our sweet spot is that we want to get those and, you know, you're, we've always called them oil wells, get those oil wells pumping. And I, you know, I'm trying to get us to six to seven oil wells pumping because as the market does, whatever the market does, you know, all those oil wells aren't going to be, be, you know, being fruitful all at the same time. Exactly. Now, you know, do, do they all like bear fruit throughout the year? Yes, of course. If you have some great, some great strategies and you're going deep with them, but I'm telling you guys, one of your strategies has to be what Braden does, what he talks about. I don't care how many you have. If you have three, four, five, one of them has to be this, has to be this strategy. And you've got to be able to invest some dollars and be able to get leads and opportunities back. Right. Um, and and so, Brayden, what are you, when you, because, you know, you've been doing this consistently, like you've put in the work and right. the results, you, you're getting results for, for um, you know, I joke all over the globe because, You've got clients that I that you've helped that are in Canada. You've even got my boys down in in, in Portugal that you've yep. helped set up some stuff in Portugal that were generating leads. Yep. So, what are some of the things um, that when you first start having conversations with somebody, like that you help them kind of overcome maybe some limiting beliefs or some thoughts that you have to help them with uh, when you first start working with someone? Yeah, um, you know, first off, you know, especially with what I do. Um, you know, being able to work with all these different people around the country. I know I've ran ads in, in probably all 50 states, maybe not Alaska, but almost in every all, every state, Portugal, Mexico, Canada, uh, Puerto Rico. I was just doing some stuff in Puerto Rico. We were getting seven cents cost per lead in Puerto Rico. Um, it's really put me in a position where, you know, I've been able to test a lot of different things. Um, and I've been able to do a lot of different things with people all around the air, around the world, right? So the things that I've done and put in place and tested, I've got to a point where I know it's proven. Um, I'll say that the things that you have to understand with, with like the Facebook and the Instagram is there's a stigma that comes with it. Um, and the stigma is that, oh, I've done it before. Or I've tried that before. Or I've had somebody help me with it before. And I just really didn't get the results that I was looking for. I didn't get any results at all. And so that's a big thing that I run into out of the gate. Um, is that, you know, what is the stigma that comes along with running Facebook and Instagram ads and paying such a little cost of, in some cases, like, you know, the lowest I've seen is seven cents per lead, but on average, we're looking at closer to two to $3 cost per lead. Um, it, it's getting over that limiting belief. Mm. Um, and I think the biggest thing that, other than the fact that I, that I've have kind of the, the track record of being able to work with all these people and it to be proven that you have to understand is that you have to run marketing that's in alignment with what's currently going on with the market that you're in. Right. And so the example that I've been giving people recently, you know, is, and it's the first question I ask people outside of where, what market are we going to target specifically is, you know, what type of market are we experiencing there? Okay. And what I mean by that is, you know, are we in a buyer's market or are we, or are we in a seller's market? Because the perception of the consumer is going to change based on the type of market that you're experiencing. For example, you know, over COVID, we were in a super, you know, heavy seller's market, right? Multiple bid situations, uh, cash offers, paying above asking price. 
And the ad that we ran then that worked the best is going to be the just listed ad. Because if we're trying to market to the motivated buyer, like understanding what their perception is, is that, hey, if I'm going to be in the market looking for something, I want to see what's hitting the market right now, right? Which is when we ran the just listed is it's offering all of the recently listed homes that are currently in that market. So we knew when we generated that lead, that was somebody that's not a tire kicker, right? They're not window shopping. They want to see what's hitting the market. Right. And so the, the other end of the spectrum of that is like when we're talking about more so of a buyer's market, kind of what we're starting to experience now uh, and have been over really the last six months or so, depending on what market you're in, is running something like the price reduced ad. Right. Because we understand the perception of that buyer. That buyer is, hey, listen, I kind of feel like I'm getting the short end of the stick on rates. If I am going to purchase in this market, I better be getting a good deal. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to click on something, they're going to click on something of what are what are all the best deals, all the price reduced homes. Right. So making sure that and, and, and explaining, articulating that as long as you run your marketing in alignment with what's currently going on in the market and that and, and the, the, the offer to the market makes sense. Um, I think you'll always have success with it. Um, but getting through those limiting beliefs are just some of the things that I experience with people, you know, as I work with different people across the country and, and world, essentially. Yeah, man. You know, it's that whole message to market match. And even, even I think Braden, even asking the question, you know, who, who's your ideal client and, and what price point are they in? Because what we're seeing is, is even, you know, markets, you can go into the same market and have like multiple markets depending upon price point. Right. And, and so, but you're so spot on from what you're, the feedback you're hearing, because um, that is the perception that that we're hearing from buyers, right? And it's still supply and demand, and there's not enough supply, but yet the buyers are are behaving and acting like it's a it's a buyer's market, and right. and so it's so so important. And the other thing that you guys have to 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 take away and understand, especially what we're talking about with marketing, is everything's a test. Yeah, everything is a test, and you know. We, we've had the, the, the opportunity to, to mentor and work with, with some of the, the marketing greats ever, right? With the Dan right. Kennedy and Jay Abraham and Frank Kern. And, and so, you know, Jay uh, Abraham would always tell us is like, I don't know, let's test it. That's really the answer. It's like, I don't know, let's test it. Once we know who our, our ideal client is, target market, what's going on, market to message match. Right. And being able to to go there. And so I think like what, to your point, what you said earlier, Braden was, well, I've tried that. It didn't work. Well, you just right. didn't test it enough. You didn't tweak right. it. Sometimes right. it's, it's one little thing that all you got to do is tweak. 100%. The results are exponential. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, is, you know, obviously, you know, message to market matching and there's so many different aspects of what could potentially be the reason you're not getting results. And I've kind of come up with this framework that I go through on determining, you know, where should we, we be running this ad? We've talked a little bit earlier about, you know, what type of ad we should be running in that market. There's this framework I'll share with you guys of kind of how we mitigate getting into a, a situation where we don't get results on our marketing or our cost per lead is too high or we generate leads in a market that doesn't have enough inventory or, you know, not enough supply. And so what I typically do, and, and because in most cases I work with an agent and not all, but in most cases, there's going to be multiple cities. And I always run my marketing for the most part city specific. Um, I, I, there's multiple cities um, that they're open to being transactional. And for an example, I'm here in the Dallas Fort Worth market in Frisco, right? An agent that I could meet here in Frisco today may be open and being in Plano, McKinney, and I know you're probably, some of you agents may not know where that is specifically, but these are all suburbs around the area, right? And so we, we, if we're open to being transactional in all those areas, there's some things we want to take into consideration to really understand, is this going to give us the best return on our investment, right? And so what I typically do is I'm going to say, let's go look at the MLS because the data is not going to lie, right? Let's look at all single family homes, if that's the type of ad and transaction that we're going to be trying to generate, uh, a lead for. And so we're going to say, what are all the single family homes? Okay. All price ranges. And I want to look at the last 30 days of what's been pending and sold. And that should kind of give me my, my demand, right? That's essentially what that's going to do. And then I'm going to go look at what's active and then coming soon if they have it in their market. And essentially what we're looking at is the absorption rate there, 
But what that's going to help us determine is based on all of these city cities here, which ratio is kind of the one we want to go with, where we make sure that we're going to have demand here, we're going to get a, a good cost per lead, but we also have supply to fulfill that demand. Right. Because if we if we start running this to an area that doesn't have a lot of demand, our cost per lead is too high. We don't have enough leads coming in. And the other end of the spectrum is, you know, it could be the area that everyone wants to be in. But if we don't have any deals for to any you know inventory or, or availability uh, for them, once we generate that lead, then now we're running around putting multiple bid situations or putting multiple bid situations. Um, and it's very hard to get a deal under contract. Right. So we want to make sure when we're doing this, that we go through that framework to make sure that the area that we're actually offering homes in is going to give us a good cost per lead. Um, there's going to be, you know, inventory available and that we can actually put deals under contract once we start generating these leads. It is, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, having that, that, that criteria, right. I love what you just said, right. Numbers don't lie. Let's look at the right. data. Data, data will tell us where we need to go um, and data will tell us where the opportunity is. And, and so being able to have that framework to be able to work within and, and that's really understanding today's market right. and, and just know, you know, hey, we're in the first part of kind of what getting back into, you know, um, it's a unique market, but it's the first quarter of a unique market. And, you know, you're going to have to reevaluate probably in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, right? You can't okay, just fall back on. on to, I talked to somebody today and I said, listen, guy, I'm like, understand that the, what I tell people is like, don't get married to one ad. And that principle is don't get married to one marketing angle, right? Because you're probably going to have to adjust with the market as we move forward, hmm. right? And, and, and what I mean by that is like, for an example, uh, what we talked about earlier, you know, you could still be in, you know, a buyer's market. Um, but if we're starting to shift back into that seller's market or vice versa, your your marketing strategy is going to have to change to stay in alignment with that to make sure you're still getting the, the best return on investment. How do you um, want to look at or have have the people that you work with? Like, what are some of the metrics and the things that that are important for them to understand and pay attention to? Um, I think honestly, cost per lead is always going to be the biggest indicator um, because we understand the percentages. We understand that these are going to close on, you know, a two to three percent conversion rate. And we know we need to generate at least 100 leads or so to do two or three deals. Right. If we start generating less than that, um, you know, we may not have enough leads coming in to to actually do a deal within a 30 day period. Uh, so that's the biggest thing is making sure that that cost per lead Lowest we can get it is best case, but realistically somewhere in that two to three dollar range, right? Yeah. Um, that's really what we're trying to find. And so you may have to test a few different things, right? I think the framework that I go through, um, and 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 when it kind of goes back to what you were talking about with the test, I think the framework and understanding the market and always putting our best fo fo uh, foot forward when we're dialing in our strategy, make sure that we're in the right city and we're running the right ad, okay? But then there, there comes to actually the, the image of the ad, right? Does that image actually relate to the consumers within that market? And so a lot of that is a test, right? Um, is this a style of house that people like in the area? Or maybe is it a different style? Is it a newer house, right? Is it a different color variation? Whatever. That's going to get us a better cost per lead. Um, you know, but that's the main thing that I always take a look at when right when we come in is is, is I'm going to know if a, a ad is successful by the cost per lead. If we're under three or four dollars, then we're in a really good scenario. If we're seeing something above four, then we probably need to make a change. I love that. And, and you know, you guys listening in, think about this for a second. What Braden just shared, and we know this just over the years, know this to be true. If you're spending, say, say your budget is 300 bucks a month, you generate 100 leads. So it's just $3 per lead. You generate hundred leads. You have a 1% conversion. That's one deal. Well, most of you guys, your average commission is, is over 10,000 per, per, per deal. So would you not trade $300 a month and get 10,000 in return? Yeah, you would do that all the time. And that's why I'm saying this has to be one of your strategies is generating some, some leads to be able to, to have that, that conversion. There's not like, I don't know about you B, but Man, I'd trade, I'd, tr I'd give $300 away every day to get 10,000 back in return. Yeah, that's what I, I tell people. I'm like, listen, on average, we see two to 3%. Worst case, you might be one to 2%. Best case, I've seen it is six to eight, somewhere in there. 
But let's just go with the bottom line average of 2%, guys. You know, if your cost per acquisition, meaning it cost me $150, like you said, to acquire $10,000 commission check, um, I would be making that investment all day long, every day for the rest of my life. You know, and, and, and what you have to come to the conclusion of is I think a lot of people understand that and maybe they have a little bit of a, a limiting belief around it. If, if that's actually even possible, I can give you testimony after testimony of people that has been successful with it, where that where it comes really down to the wire is, are you willing to learn the skill sets and become consistent of following the process that has that is required and comes along with being able to get that conversion rate? Right. Because these are leads that you are going to have to text back. You're going to have to email them back. You're going to have to call them. These are not people that just come in and say, hey, I want to write an offer today. Right. Majority of these leads are in a three to six month time frame. We see on average that it takes seven follow ups before we actually put one of these deals under contract. And so a big thing is making sure that you, you a have a process and b the process that we provide you're clear on to be able to convert these leads once they come in. Um, and that's, and I'll be honest with you guys, I very rarely, I mean, I've probably built, I would say north of two to 3000 ads somewhere in there. I can't really honestly calculate it. Um, and I've never seen somebody shut an ad down that was following the process because they're getting the results. I see people shut the ads down all the time because they realize like, okay, oh, I actually do have to pick up my phone. I actually do have to put the time and effort in, you know? Um, but I've never seen anybody that's been having success with it you know, by following the process, ever, ever turn these off? Do we change the, do we change the angle, right? Does the market change? Do we change a few things here and there? Yes. But I have people that have been working with me for the last, you know, three years, four years that we continue to run different ads uh, because they know that that return on investment is, is two to 3000, right? So it's like, it's two to 3000 X return on investment is just, it's honestly hard to comprehend, but it's, it is what it is. And it's, it's just ridiculous, honestly. Yeah, and it and it frustrates with me because I, I do still have a few clients that are spending a shit ton of money on Zillow. And right. you know, they're getting a one-to-one -one return. And I'm yep. like, like, what in the like like I mean, I just I don't know. I just want to take a like a frying pan or something and just smack the shit out of them because it's like, guys, yes. Like there is a better way. There is a better way. There's a better return. Yeah, I get it. They're they're at the bottom. They're closer to the bottom of the funnel with Zillow. Right. But what do you, I mean, you're spending 10,000 to make 10,000? Like, yeah. that doesn't make sense. You got to wake up every month to cover right. that. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm not saying, you know, that that's for everybody. Maybe you, you've got Zillow where it's four or five time return. Whatever, whatever your threshold of return, you're fine with. But there is a better way. And, and I'm just telling you, one of the strategies has to be what Braden's talking about. But you're so spot on. You you have to, you know, generating the opportunity is just, just one part of the process. 100%. 100%. I think, you know, I, I never say anything bad about EXP um, as, as the brokerage we're with. But if I could say one thing, it would say that agents are not required to learn KV Core uh, when they come in. And so... Um, you know, it's hard to like something you don't know, right? Yeah. And so that's what I see a lot of agents. Oh, I don't like KV4. Oh, you know, I've, I've got in there and I've poked around and I just couldn't get it figured out. And, and that's something guys, that's part of like kind of the, the, the offer or the process when, when working with me, if we decide to work together, or even if we don't decide to work together in terms of, of, of putting me in place as a man, marketing manager for you, we have the videos for it that teach you the fundamentals of learning KV core. What are the few things that are actually going to move the needle, right? Categorizing leads correctly, setting tasks to make sure we're consistently following up, making sure we have a property alert system that's in place that is sending them all of the properties that fit their specific criteria. So we can see when they look at those properties, how many times they've looked at those properties, right? All of the things that you need to learn in KV Core, we can teach you how to do that. Um, as well as all the other, you know, factors such as, you know, the, the scripts to say, talk to these leads when they come in um, and all the follow-ups and stuff like that. But that's a big part of this, I think too, is agents don't feel comfortable enough uh, to implement something like this because they don't feel like they know the tools that we have. And I'm telling you this right now, I've seen a lot of different platforms. I've worked in a lot of different platforms. Um, and, and there's nothing else that I would recommend really um, for what we get this at, right? Our monthly fee at eXp, we get this for free anyways. 
Um, there's nothing else that I see functionality wise that I would rather put in place other than KB core. Um, and so I would, I would really challenge you to look at, you know, figuring out how we can get in touch to, you know, start learning KB core, even if you're not generating leads, because the things that it has in there to even work the leads that you currently have is super powerful. Um, and so we can, we can provide you with a link on, I call it my conversion process. It's the method. It's a very universal methodology, not just for the leads that if you were to generate leads from an ad like this that we're talking about, but also the methodology of how you should be, you know, really using your platform, your CRM to convert the current business that you have in there. hundred percent. I mean, if you guys, you know, if you're, if your business is built on, on word of mouth, on, on referral, on social, um, it's great. You got to have a place though, where everything lives and, and so those, those businesses are, are great. Um, they're highly profitable, but they're so inconsistent. And this is, I'm just, I'm, you know, um, this is why this is, has to be one of your strategies, right? Where you create some consistency and consistent lead gen, lead flow. And, you know, what, what Braden's talking about is that you got to look at with, with the, the front part of your business in, in four different pillars. And that first pillar is, is always effort. And, you know, it's one of my little favorite Goggin sayings is, you know, effort doesn't require talent but you have to have the effort to show up. And so effort, and when you look at it with, within this, this marketing and sales process, effort is dials, it's texts, it's engagements, it's, it, you know, pushing to a conversation. And that would be even one of the numbers that I would tell you guys to maybe even pay attention to, like what Braden's talking about is, okay, well, what's my cost per, per lead? What's my, my, my cost per click, my cost per lead? What's my cost per conversation? What is right. my cost per acquisition? And that's where you can start to see some, some, some real conversions because, <clears throat> because the second lever is skill. And, and, you know, Braden does all this great job or you go through and you set it up. And I've had people that have, have just, and, and we'll give you guys uh, the time and location, but Braden does a call every Friday that you guys can jump on. And all the recordings are available. I've had people, I've had clients that just have followed exactly what you teach on those Friday calls and set their own stuff up and are generating leads just off of what, of what you, what you teach, but it comes down to skill. And so th those are the, the two buckets that we used to always pay attention to, especially when we were running and, and running our sales team, even in Lawton, right? It's like, Hey, where's your effort? Where's your skill? Well, the, the other two buckets that that you you also have to take into consideration because if your effort and your skill is there and you're still not getting your results, it comes down to what Braden's talking about. One of them is your tools. What tools are you using? And if you guys are at EXP, you're already paying eighty five dollars a month. Use the damn tool. Right. Um, and you know, your dad and I talked about yesterday on Power Hour. Um, getting real clear on what the words mean. So like when you hear somebody say, man, I just don't like KV court. Well, tell me what you don't like about it. Right. And nine times out of 10, they haven't even got in there and messed with it. 100%. And then that fourth bucket, Braden, it's, it's all about the data, right? And that's where you come in and you're tweaking constantly. Let's look at what the MLS is, t is telling us. Let's look at where the opportunity is in the market. There is always an opportunity in Every market, every market condition, you just got to know how to look and how to find it. And then what you said earlier, what is the message to right. match the market? And, and really, um, all marketing is, is really just joining the conversation in their head. Right. And so what is your ad? What is your call to action? What is your headline? What is your picture? What is, what is that that's going to join the conversation in their head? But those are your four buckets, your effort, your skill, your tools, and then your leads, your data. And that's where you really have to, to focus on. Yeah, I think one thing you kind of mentioned earlier, though, and you hit the nail on the head, guys, as uh, John, you did, is, is that, you know, you have to find something. I think when you talk about, we talked about the oil wells earlier, right? Getting those oil wells pumping is you have to find something that is predictable and scalable, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about referrals and spear and all of that's great, but it is something that is very unpredictable and it is, it's not scalable really either, in my opinion. So um, this is something that we know that if we invest $300 a month, and let's just say we get a 2% conversion rate on the low end, we're going to do two transactions from that. 
And so what that means is if we know we can do two transactions from $300, we should be able to do 600 tra or four transactions from $600, right? And it's something that we can scale going forward once we get to the point of actually putting some deals under contract. And so I think that's a very important part of this is making sure you have something like that regardless of what the oil well is, is making sure it is predictable and scalable. And, and from the results I've seen with this and the people that actually scale this to the point of, okay, what's the next hire, right? Do we put an ISA in place? Do we put a transaction coordinator in place? Do I put a buyer's agent in place, right? Because if this is something that you want to build, if, if your goal is to build a team, um, this is definitely something that you could put in place, you know, to, to scale to that point, right? Um so that's just another a key point, guys, is, is this is definitely something that is predictable and scalable, um, you know, all well that I've seen. If you guys, you know, it's, it's our whole agent to CEO concept. And if you really, truly want to move from agent to really, truly being the CEO of your business, it is required to have a predictable lead generation system in your business period. You're not going to get there. You're just not going to. You can build a great lifestyle business. You can build a great practice. But if you really want to build a business that grows and that's not solely or, or always dependent upon you, um, you've got to have a couple of these strategies in place. At least get one, one predictable, consistent, like what Braden's talking about, lead, lead gen, lead gen strategy um, in, in place. Um, you know, Braden, as um, kind of you know, moving to the to the end of this kind of this conversation, some other things to for for these you know for agents to be be thinking about um, if they're like, okay, I get it. What should I do first? Like like say, hey, I need you guys to you know make, make we've got through through their mindset. Now they understand. Hey, I've got to create this. I've got to have this oil well. What do they need to do first? Well, there's really two options here, guys. Um, you know, the first option is I've provided, um, I'm going to provide you with everything you need to know uh, and, and, and know how to do it, all the videos that'll teach you how to do all of this uh, for free, okay? Um, and so that's going to be at replay.honeybadgerlegion.com, okay? There's three videos in there really, it'll be three videos. They may not be the same three videos that each of you would watch. But what I'm getting at is there's the first video is you want to watch the pros and cons of the different ads uh, of what's in there. Okay, so you can kind of come to the determination of what is the type of ad that you want to run um, based on your kind of ideal transaction type. The second video you would watch is actually the video that's in alignment with what you come to the conclusion of. And that's why I said it may be different per agent of which three videos you watch, but that would be the, you know, determining that video based on the type of ad. The third is going to be the conversion process. That's going to be me coming in. And like I said, teaching you all the things about KB Core. It's, it's showing you exactly hands-on, click by click, how to use all of the different functionalities in KB Core. So those would be the first three videos uh, that I would suggest starting out with. The other option is, is, is I am for hire. If you want to put me in place to be your marketing manager, um, I basically come in, I help you determine the right strategy, the right type of ad to be running in your market. I build it all for you hands-free. You don't have to touch anything. You can watch me do it. You share your screen. Um, and, and then uh, I actually train you on KB Core myself. And then I, I become your marketing manager moving forward. That means I'm going to help you manage these ads ongoing. As long as you're with eXp, um, you'll have access to my personal calendar where you can meet with me um, uh, ongoing as much as you need or as little as you need. So um, those are kind of the two different routes that you can go. Um, but we did want to make sure for the honey badgers, we did give you a free option. We did give you a way to get this implemented if you didn't want to put me in place. And so, like I said, that's replay honeybadgerlegion.com is going to be the link uh, that you'd want to go to um, to be able to access those videos. And guys, I just threw that in the chat. Replay.honeybadgerlegion.com. Yep. Get there. Um, and then, you know, B, are you still doing the calls on Friday? I am still doing the calls on Friday. Uh, Those are at 11 o'clock central every Friday. 11 o'clock uh, central time. I come in literally from start to finish. Um, you know, I'm going to build an ad out, a new one each time, most cases. Sometimes I do a, a rerun of one I built before. 
Um, but yeah, you can follow along on there with me. And, and that one's a little more interactive because obviously I'm live on there and we can do some Q and A. So I allow for questions and allow you to, to jump on and kind of ask anything that's not making sense as I got, as I go through it. Uh, and that so URL to join you every Friday at 11 central. Um, what is it? I would have to, I would have to ask you that, huh? Um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I can find it real fast. I think it's, um, uh, funnel Friday dot. Oh. It is honeybadgerlegion.com. Yep. Honeybadgerlegion.com is uh, where you guys can catch Brayden at 11 Central every Friday. I'm going to throw it in there. Honeybadgerlegion.com. Yep. So it's either replay.honeybadgerlegion.com or honeybadgerlegion.com. We try to keep everything in alignment there, make it easier. We do. And, um, you know, guys, I, I just can't, you know, stress this enough. And, and, you know, if you have, you know, assistants or VAs or, or somebody that's helping you with, with your business, get them on the call. Um, I think, you know, by you listening to this, obviously, you know, hopefully uh, we're able to shift your mindset if you were a little resistant to it, but uh, being able to understand, you know, just, the low cost and then just the ROI, there's, there's really not much more that you can invest other than, you know, time, but invest some dollars in to getting, to getting that return, but you've got to work them. You can't just let them pile up. You, you do have yeah. to engage. You do have to work them. One more thing. I'm going to leave you guys with this. And this is what I always kind of tell people, you know, agents that come to me is I think regardless if you're focused on agent attraction or not, that agent attraction is in the back of everybody's mind at EXP. Um, and obviously you can't really offer this unless it's something that you're implementing. Um, but we're running a webinar right now. You may have seen it and it, it's basically offering these services for agents that want to partner with us. Um, you know, and so me and pops kind of sat down, we, we kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, nine times out of 10, we talked to an agent, what is the biggest issues that they're currently facing in their business right now? Um, and, and the, the wider term is I need to do more deals, but the more specific is, is that they don't have enough leads that they're generating. That's right. right. Um, and this is definitely something that you can leverage as your offer on how to get people to, to, to come under you and join you, uh, within the honey badger nation by being able to say, Hey, this is what I'm doing currently. This is the, these are the tools, resources, that I'm getting within my organization at EXP, these are the results that I'm getting. Because the cool thing about this is this doesn't, I, I, like we talked about earlier, I run these ads in multiple countries, you know, of multiple states, right? And so this is any anywhere that an agent is, we can put this in place. And so as you're having conversations with agents and showing them this is how you're generating business and this is what you're doing. And when you talk about the return on investment, um, as long as you're positioning it correctly, I think it would be very difficult for an agent to, to at least say, I would not be open to looking at the, the, the opportunity of EXP and what you have to offer with that. So I just kind of want to put that bug in your ears, guys. Obviously, like I said, you can't, you can't really have that conversation until you have your own experience with it. Um, but, you know, this is definitely something that we're using for, for me and Pops on the front end for all of our a agent attraction right now. So just to kind of put that out there. Yeah. And, you know, guys, I, I mean, I know it works. I mean, like I said, I've, I've got clients, you know, in multiple States, uh, I've got clients up in Canada. It's like, I got my boys in Portugal. They're all getting results all from Braden's work. Um, this, this, this one strategy right here that we're talking about. And so, um, you know, lean in on it, um, check out the replays, jump on the Friday call and that's an open call. So, what Braden's just talking about how you can, you know, leverage this to your agent attraction efforts is also, you know, Hey, you're, you're, you're wrestling with, Hey, if I could, if I would you, if I could get you on a call with, um, you know, this guy that's setting up, um, you know, lead gen campaigns all over the planet and having tremendous success, would you, would you want to get on? And so you can leverage that Friday call to your advantage to help with your agent attraction efforts. And I see, you know, um, I see it all the time and, you know, I just, I tell people about it, but you know, you guys have to do the work. You've got to get those conversations. You've got to get people on, but, um, yeah, I know a lot of agents are struggling with Legion and right here's a solution. So being able to, to leverage it, not only for yourself, but 
for others um, as you continue to to grow your your organization, your team, uh, whatever it is that you're you're trying to accomplish with your business. Hundred percent, love it. B, you're amazing, man. I appreciate you. Um, jumping on here, adding a ton of value. Uh, you're nonstop, just like what we were talking about. You know, <laughs> it's your third, third conversation around this today already, and you got some more to go. And yeah, it's every day, every day. Right, sir. Every day. Staying consistent, man. That's the yeah, no matter what it is, right? Whether it's the gym, running, you know, calling your leads and staying consistent every day. You know, whether it is, man. you want Consist- to or not. Consistency always wins. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey man, I really, I really appreciate y'all, everybody that's been on, um, spending the time with us today. Kitchens, I appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, as I start to learn more and grow more, you know, it's great to have these opportunities to kind of, you know, articulate my knowledge and my experiences. So I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man. Thank you. And, uh, appreciate all of you guys. Make sure you guys give, uh, Give Braden lots of love, connect with him on um, on social, and then uh, take advantage of, of his time and those calls on, on Friday. And yep. uh, see you guys next time. Appreciate you. Later. Thanks.